Jenny, welcome back to the Bookworms, buddy. I am really, really late this month getting started. Um, it is already the 4th. Happy Independence Day, everybody. Um, this weekend was really busy. I had my daughter and her, my youngest daughter, and her two, her two kids were here Saturday and Sunday. So now is the first time I've had a chance to get to videos. So right now I'm going to do my June wrap-up. As you guys know, June was Read Your E-Reader Month. And I read 10 of those, and then I read 8 physical books. So I had a really, really great reading month. So I'm going to do the ebooks first. Um, let's just get started on this. The first one I read was The House at Firefly Beach. And this book um, follows Sydney, who was the sister of the main character in Summer at Firefly Beach. Um, their Aunt Claire dies. Sydney decides that she's staying behind to kind of look after things and be there for her uncle and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, it was just one of those really cute contemporary romances, although there wasn't much romance, I don't think. I don't feel like there was a lot of romance. There's not a lot of drama. And like I said in one of my wrap-ups for Read Your E-Reader, I felt like I was pretty generous with a four-star rating. So I might have to go back and bump that down to a three-star. There's just not enough there to keep you engaged with the story. So, um, yeah, that's about all I can say about that one. Um, the second one I read was About Tomorrow, and this was by Abby Glines. I'm just looking for another Abby Glines book that I enjoy as much as Just For Now. Um, I read As She Fades and that one wasn't very good so I tried About Tomorrow. Again, just not any drama. Um, in this book you got this girl, I don't even remember what her name is now, but she was friends with Creed and his sister Cora and they were like a, a pretty tight-knit group and Cora ends up, I think it was drug related, she ends up dying and Creed just walks away and just forgets everything and she's pretty hurt by that because she misses Cora too and then later down the line Creed comes back into her life and Creed's trying to get make his way back in she's having a hard time with that and that's pretty much the story um, Abby Glines does have a very good writing style it's very fluid but I just don't think there's enough to keep you engaged to the story so I rated that one three stars the next one I read was The Tanglewood Tea Shop by Lilac Mills, and I really, really, really wanted to love this book, and I really, really didn't. Um, again, it's just one of those cutesy stories. You've got Stevie and her aunt, I want to say Peggy, had an inheritance for her, her sister, and her mother, and um, Stevie ended up getting the most of it. She was currently living with her mom and her sister, and she moved away, and she opened up The Tanglewood Tea Shop, which I think she called Peggy's tea shop or something um, and it was just really mostly focused on the tea shop and I wanted it to be more romance the romance wasn't there um, there was a love interest but it just I don't know it just didn't do a lot for me it just didn't really keep me that engaged with the story again another three stars so after those first three books I was kind of like oh What's gonna my rest of my reading month gonna be like? So then I picked up The Family Across the Street. This one had nothing to do with any of the um, prompts for Read Your E-Reader, but it was on my e-reader. The Family Across the Street was our, our bookworm book club pick, and this was a thriller, and it's by Nicole Trope, and it was fantastic. I was so glad that I was finally gonna have, enjoy a book. Um, this one, the only thing I knew about this was the title was The Family Across the Street. So when you think about it, it can be kind of ominous, you know. So um, you've got this family, they move in, it's Catherine and John, and they've got twins. And then they just, you don't really see them. Like they don't come to like neighborhood barbecues, they don't come to meet and greets, or you don't see them out and about. And so Logan, who is a delivery driver, he delivers packages, he had a computer that Catherine had ordered. And he takes it to the door and says, you got a sign for this. She refuses to let him in. She just opens up one of those little peephole things, you know, and he felt like something was wrong. Like she was very tense and stressed out. And he didn't know what to do with that because he's just trying to get back on his feet because... Um, I believe he just got off of some kind of parole or something 
And then you've got Gladys and Lou who live in the house on the other side. And Gladys is one of those um, kind of busybody kind of neighbors, you know. And Lou is her husband and he doesn't get around as well. So um, Gladys is always here and there and everywhere. And she was telling the police that something's going on over there. Something's not right. No one would ever believe her. And that's all I'm going to tell you. And then the story just takes off from there. It was fantastic. It was a great thriller, a perfect plot twist. I loved it. Five stars for that one. Um, the next one I read was One Italian Summer, and this one is by Rebecca Searle. Your main character is Katie, and she's super close to her mom, and her mom gets sick. Well, they're making plans for when she gets better, they're going to go over to Italy because her mom had spent time over there and would tell delightful stories to Katie. Well, Katie's mom passes away before they get that chance. Katie decides that she's going to go anyway, so she goes to Italy, to Positano, Italy, and she meets her mom when her mom was like 30 years old. I felt the story was a little predictable, and I think by the synopsis you can see how that would be predictable. There was a twist in it um, that I didn't really think about, but if you think hard enough you can figure out what the twist would be but there just wasn't enough to the twist wasn't enough to like you know make me just rate it five stars um it was just kind of okay for me same with um in five years i think it's called that one was also just okay for me so i rated that one three stars um the next one i read was all the salt in the sea and this is by tammy l harrow um, this one just threw me for a loop. Um, when I read the synopsis, I felt like, okay, this is going to be like a romantic, a contemporary romance or something along those lines. So you have Abby who is kind of mixed up and she's not sure where her marriage is going. She finds out her husband has an eight year old son. So he was, um, not faithful to her. So she just, she feels like she needs to get away um, just until her daughter Ruby goes to college because she's going to help her get off to college. So she decides to take a trip where? To Italy, Positano, Italy. Um, and she meets Daniel and they just hit it off and, you know, he's just, he accepts it for her and they have, you know, great conversation and they decide to travel around these little places together. And then she finds out Ruby is sick. So she has to go back home to take care of Ruby and that's where the whole story kind of shifts. Like it just, I was mind blown at what took place at that point. It's very um, psychological and it's, it's kind of scary in parts. And it's just like, yeah, it was, com it just completely flipped over for me. And I just couldn't hardly get over the change that quick. Like, you know, I'm bouncing along thinking this is going to be some contemporary romance book. And then, whoo, I was wrong on that. Um, it was fantastic. I rated it four stars. I think if you like psychological thrillers, you will absolutely love this story. Okay, then the next one I read was um, Riot House. And this is by Callie Hart. I actually... Um, got this recommendation from Michaela over at Michaela Eve. This is a darker book um, and you've got like they call it the, the riot house because there's the riot boys and this consists of Wren and Dash and Pax and they come from families with money so they don't have to live on campus. They live down the hill in their own riot house and then you've got Elodie who is a military brat pretty much but she can't stand her father uh, and that will all come out everything about backstory on both of Ren and then of Elodie but um, so as you can kind of guess Elodie and Ren these are the two main characters of this book they kind of hook up and you start hearing a little bit about both of them disappearing off campus and at first, fingers were pointed at Ren because Ren supposedly dated her and she ended up disappearing. And that's pretty much the layout of the story. 
Um, I'm not going to tell you anything else because it could be easy to give stuff away, especially when you're talking about Eldie and Ren. Um, it's a very gritty story, um, very dark, but it was had a very good storyline, and you learn a lot about Ren and Elodie. So it was fantastic. I gave that one five stars. I loved it. So then I moved on, and the next one I read was Riot Rules. Now this one is pretty much along the same lines, but this one's about Dash and then Elodie's friend Karina. But this book happens before Riot, Riot House, so I wish I'd have known how that layout was because I feel like I would have enjoyed it more had I read Riot Rules first. But Riot House is the first one, and I think that's just laying down the groundwork, pretty much. And, um... I really, I, I'm not sure the purpose or why um, the author would write it that way and it not be like a novella, but it is a full length story. But I think you could probably do good reading Riot Rules before Riot House. I wish I had known how Riot Rules was going to work out. So Riot Rules was before Elodie was there. She does show up at the end of this one, but again, it's the same same kind of thing. They've got um, really grim backgrounds, both Dash and Karina, um, and all that stuff will come out, and in this one, Dash and Karina did actually date, but then they didn't anymore, and Karina was crushed, and that's pretty much the story for this one. Another great story, but I only gave that one four stars but I still enjoyed the story. Okay, the next one that I read was Beneath the Fallen Stars, and this one was by Kaylee Ryan and Lacey Black. Um, this one was like a military romance. Um, you have Shane, which is the girl, and then Ford. Ford is off in the military, and him and his friend, his friend is actually Shane's cousin. They get a two-week leave and it's just pretty much that it's it's a romance it was really it was written really well I really enjoyed it I enjoyed the characters um I believe I rated that four stars so that it was it was a decent one and then the last ebook that I read was Be Still My Heart by Emily McIntyre uh, and there's somebody else somebody there's another um author to that but you'll see it up here on the thing um, anyway this one is you have an ex Navy SEAL who decides to take over his father's lobster business um, and they have the, the big traps you know that go down in the water and they pull those up well he pulled that up and there was a body in it and this is a romantic suspense um, and then you've got, and okay, so his name is Lincoln and her name is Sloan. She's a detective and she is sent to figure out what's going on to help the department because their police department is just not that great because they don't have things like this happen. They're on an island and that stuff doesn't really happen here. Well, she comes from the city and she's there to help the investigation. And of course, you know, they get together and whatever. I feel like there was just more sex than was needed in this considering I mean it was a suspense and they had to figure out what was going on because you know there the, there was more murders that happened and she was there to investigate but they got together quite often and I don't feel like it needed to be that often but it is again Emily McIntyre she's a dark romance writer this was just a romantic suspense I gave that one I believe I gave that one four stars if I can remember correctly I know I didn't give it five stars so that was all I read in um, ebooks so I did really good I had ten ebooks that I read so now we're going to move on to the physical books that I read let me get some room over here. 
<clears throat> Sorry, guys. Okay, so on physical books, I ended up reading eight. So let's get started on that. The first one we got here is The Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is by Holly Jackson. This was fantastic. So this is the first book in the trilogy. You have this girl, um, Andy Bell, who was murdered um, by her supposed boyfriend, Sal Singh, and he was convicted and went to jail. Now, five years later, Pip is in the school, and she has a last paper to, to write, and she, she loves solving, like, mysteries and stuff. So she decides she's going to solve this mystery. Her name is Pip. I really didn't like that name. And that's pretty much the story. Um, she's going to solve the murder. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the other, the other two books are going to be pretty much the same thing. Um, it was really good. I think I gave this four stars. The next one we got here is Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kemmerer. Fantastic book. This was five stars for me. You have a girl who um, loses her mom. And the only way that she can deal with that is writing her letters so she writes letters and then she puts them at her grave and her name is Juliet and then you got De uh, Declan who is a bad guy he's not a good kid and he's on probation and he has to do community service and that community service that he has to do is caretaker of the, the cemetery grounds so he's there he's cutting the yard getting rid of weeds you know that kind of stuff and he comes across one of these letters that Juliet left for her mom, and he answers it. So now she feels like their privacy was invaded, and this was something special between her and her mom, and she tells him so in a letter back. But then they just start confiding in, in one another, and the story goes from there. Beautifully written. There was just, there were so many great quotes and great parts to remember in this. I absolutely love this. This was a five-star read for me. This was also a first-time read of Bridget Kemmerer. And I do have a, a young adult trilogy from her that I want to read as well. Um, I got book two to this, More Than We Can Tell, which is um, characters from here into that book. So, yeah, this one was really good. Okay, the next one we got here is Hooked by Emily McIntyre. Um, I just talked about her in, in Be Still My Heart. This one is not a retelling. This one, that she calls them fractured fairy tales. She takes the characters and creates a new story around this. <clears throat> so James, he is actually hooked. And then you've got Peter, who is the father of Wendy, which is what it is. This is very, 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 very dark. And there is actually even a warning in the beginning of this book so um, <clears throat> when she says this is not um, a villain turning good this is he's gonna be bad and just explicit sex and lots of violence and just very dark themes so anyway you have James and it's it's about drugs it's pretty much about drugs and so you know how they all have their their areas well, Peter is starting to invade his, his area, and he decides he's going to get back at Peter by getting Wendy, and they strike up a relationship, and that's pretty much the story. That's all I'm going to get into, but it is very dark, just so you guys know that, but I really, really enjoyed the story. It's a five-star read for me. Okay, the next book we got here is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. This was really good. This is kind of like mystery thriller. Um, you've got this girl, Rachel, who has a podcast. And she, her podcast is about current trials that are, that are going on. So you've got this golden boy who supposedly raped this girl. That's what she's covering. Well, she starts getting these letters from a girl named Hannah. And 25 years ago, Hannah's sister was found dead. And they say she either committed suicide or she got pulled out into the water and she drowned. So Hannah starts asking Rachel, starts sending her letters, 
throughout the whole story, she's getting letters from, from Hannah. She wants to figure out what really happened to her sister. She doesn't, she thinks she was murdered and she didn't just commit suicide or die. And that's pretty much what the story is. It's, it's really, really good. I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one four stars. The next one we got here is Legendary by Stephanie Garber. You guys know I love Caravelle. I like this one even more. Um, I'm not going to get into this too much because if you haven't read Caravelle yet, I don't want to give away anything in this. But this one is Fowling Tella instead of Scar. And that's all I'm going to say. So this is what, this is Tella. And there, there is another game. Another game does go on in Legendary. So that's all I'm going to say about this one. This was five stars for me. I absolutely loved it. Like I said, I liked it more than I liked Caravelle. I'm really looking forward to getting the finale. The next one we got here is Wretched by Emily McIntyre. Again, this is the Never After series. There's three in, in it. Hooked is the first one. Um, the second one is actually Scarred. So this one is pretty much, it's, it's drugs again, but this one is following the characters of Wizard of Oz. Now this was really unique how they did it because how they did this one is Dorothy is sister to the Wicked Witch of the East. Is that the one that was the house dropped on? And then the other sister is the Wicked Witch of the West and they're all sisters. Again, it is drug related. It is very dark. There is another warning in here. Um, so um, you want to keep that in mind when you're reading it. But you have um, this guy Nick who is a detective and they're trying to um, infiltrate this drug family and Eveline is the Wicked Witch of the West. Anyway, her and her family are these big drug lords and he has to change his name to Brayden to infiltrate and figure out who is the one that's pushing the drugs and who's the sellers and who's the runners and all this stuff so they can bust them. And that's pretty much the story. Um, if you can guess, Eveline and Nick slash Brayden hook up in this story. And he's having to see really horrible things that Eveline does. And he can't, like, stop her because then, you know, his cover will be broken and that can't happen. So I really, really enjoyed the the plot line of this one with a little bit of mystery in there and um yeah it was pretty good but i didn't like it as much as hook so this one got four stars the next one we got here is zero day by david baldacci this was for my z for my a through z challenge which allowed me to finish that challenge up this one is a military mystery and this is book one in the john pullman series and someone who is related to the military was murdered, him and his family, and John has to go and figure out um, what went on. And that's all I'm going to say. That's all you need to know about this one. Really, I was really impressed that I liked it as much as I did because it is military-based, but it was actually written very well. But David Baldacci is a good author, so I was really impressed with this. I really enjoyed it. I rated this one four stars. And then the last book that I read was Compulsion, and this is by Martina Boone. This is the first book in the heirs of, the, of Watson Island, and this was really good. Um, you have this girl who was with her mom, and she felt like she was a prisoner in her own home because she didn't want to leave her mom. I can't tell you, I can't tell you a whole lot about, she finally does leave. Her mom does, her mom passes away and she leaves, and she goes to Watson Island and this is where her Aunt Prue is. Now the author is really good at making you think Aunt Prue is nuts. Um, so the first part of this book, you're thinking, what is going on? I ended up really, really enjoying this book. It's got paranormal vibes and romance and mystery and thriller. And it's just all wrapped up into this book and it's fantastic. I absolutely loved it. And I can't wait to get to Persuasion, I believe, is book two. And then book three is um, Illusion. So, yeah, this ended up being really good. I think I gave this four stars. And that, you guys, is my wrap-up for June. I read 18 books. 
and I did really, really, really well, and I was really glad about that. So if you've read any of these books, let me know in the comments below, and we will talk about it. Thanks, guys, for staying tuned, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.